What is the best aperture for photography? Now this is a perfectly reasonable question if you're new to photography and unfamiliar with what aperture is and how it works. So I really hope you're going to stick around, enjoy this week's video and get all the answers. Welcome to the Photo Genius channel. Hi, I'm Paul from Photo Genius. Welcome to my channel. I'm a photographer who's been teaching photography full time in Brisbane for over 16 years and creating video tutorials just like this one for over eight years. My videos, just like my workshops and courses, are designed to help you get more from your camera so you can take better photos. If you're new here, please consider subscribing to the channel. So, what is the best aperture for photography? Well, to be honest, there's no straightforward answer to that question, and that's because the best aperture to use will depend on the subject, the type of photography you're doing, and the style and look that you want to achieve. So to answer the question, what is the best aperture for photography, we need to first know what aperture is and how it affects an image. So then you can select the right aperture for the job, and then you have your answer. So let's start with what is aperture? So aperture along with shutter and ISO is one of three ways in which we can affect how bright or dark an image will be. This is called exposure, with overexposed being the term we use when an image is too bright, and of course underexposed meaning an image that is darker. Now the aperture is actually a feature of the lens and not the camera. It's a mechanical opening or iris in the lens that we can adjust. The larger the aperture, the more light can pass through the lens. And of course, the smaller the aperture, the less light can pass through the lens. Now this is a very effective way of controlling how much light your camera will capture when you take a picture. And a good analogy of how this works is to compare the aperture in the lens to the pupil of the eye. Now how large or small the aperture opening is can be viewed on the camera as an F number and is measured in F stops. Now this is where it can get confusing because the larger the F number, the smaller the aperture. And of course, the lower the F number, the larger the opening is. So the numbers appear to be back to front. Now technically they're not, but let's not worry about why for now and you will get used to this with practice. Adjusting the aperture is possible when you have your camera set to either the manual or aperture priority mode. That's A or AV on the camera mode dial. Today for this demo, I'm using the manual mode, which of course is M on the camera's mode dial. Now to then adjust the aperture, look for another dial or tiny wheel on the camera. This may be found on the back of the camera like on this Canon DSLR, but could also be on the top or sometimes the front of the camera just below the shutter button. Now turning this dial will allow you to change the aperture value. However, it is worth noting that if you're using the manual mode, the dial may instead adjust the shutter speed rather than the aperture. So you may need to hold down a button as you turn the dial. If you've got a Canon camera, look out for the AV button. If you've got a Nikon, look for a button that has an aperture symbol next to it. Now, if you're using a Fujifilm camera, then it's very likely that the aperture is controlled via the lens itself. And you can do this by turning the aperture ring. So now we know what the aperture is and how to adjust it, what aperture should you use? Well, before we can answer that question, let's first take a look at how different apertures can affect our images. As well as how much light can pass through the lens, the aperture also affects depth of field. It may also affect the shutter speed you choose to use. This will be particularly important if your subject is moving or if there is movement within your frame. Okay, so let's take a look at something called depth of field first. This is the term that applies to the portion of your image that is acceptably sharp and in focus. The choice of aperture you use can have a big impact on this. To illustrate how this works, here is a camera and as you can see we have three subjects. If we want a sharp photo of subject number one, then this is where we will want the camera to focus. Now between these two lines is our depth of field. Subjects that fall between the lines will also appear sharp and in focus. 
So as you can see, subject number one and two are sharp because they fall between the lines. Now, if I choose to use a much larger aperture, let's say f1.8, the depth of field now becomes very shallow. And this means that now only number one is sharp, the others are out of focus. But what if I want all three to be in focus? Well, this can also be achieved by stopping down the aperture. Let's try f8. Now, as you can see, we have a greater depth of field and all three subjects are in focus. So as you can see, adjusting the aperture allows you to be more creative and get the look that you want by choosing the right aperture for the job. And this is based on the subject and the look you're after. For example, if you're taking a photo of a landscape, then an aperture value of around f11 to f16 will give you a much greater depth of field and an image that is sharper from foreground all the way through to the background. Whereas maybe a wildlife or portrait photographer may prefer to use a larger aperture simply because they want to blur away distracting backgrounds. Now it is also worth noting that depth of field is also affected by the focal length of the lens, how close the camera is to the subject and how close the subject is to the background. So if you want to find out more about depth of field, you may want to check out this video next. There's a link coming up at the end. Now, if you're a fan of images with very blurry backgrounds, remember we call this a shallow depth of field, then it may be worth considering adding a prime lens to your kit as they will mostly offer much wider apertures than you will find in zoom lenses. A prime is a lens that has no zoom. Instead, it has a focal length that is fixed. One of the most popular primes is the Nifty 50. Here is a Canon version, a fixed focal length of 50 millimeters with a maximum aperture of f1.8. Now prime lenses are available in many different focal lengths and with different aperture values. Generally speaking, the wider the aperture and the lower the F number, the more expensive the lens will be, but there are some exceptions such as the Nifty 50. For more info on this lens, check the links below. Now something to note is that lenses are generally sharper as the aperture is stopped down, with the sweet spot often being around F8. However, closing the aperture right down may also introduce something called lens diffraction, which will give you a softer image. So a good tip is to try and avoid the really big F numbers where possible. So as well as controlling depth of field, another way to use aperture in a creative sense is to carefully consider the relationship between the aperture and the camera shutter speed. For example, to create a soft blurry effect on this waterfall, I needed to use a slower shutter speed because the longer the shutter is open, the more movement will be captured and the blurrier the water will be. Now, as we know, restricting the light passing through the lens by stopping the aperture down will mean a darker image, but using a slower shutter speed will not just recover the light we've lost, it will also give me the blurry effect on the water because the shutter's open longer. So why not give this a go for yourself? Try using a low ISO, set the aperture to around f11 to f16, and then simply adjust the shutter speed until the camera's meter is balanced at the zero. So when using slow shutter speeds, also referred to as long exposures, a smaller aperture, larger F number, is often the best option. But of course, sometimes you don't want any blur. So if you find yourself shooting a moving subject and you really want super sharp, crispy images, then a wider aperture is going to be a much better option as more light will be able to pass through the aperture and this will allow you to use a much faster shutter speed, which is ideal for capturing detail when taking photos of fast moving subjects like these. Now, if you feel that you're ready to experiment more with Aperture, but not feeling brave enough to shoot full manual just yet, then there is another great option. Consider using the camera's Aperture Priority Mode, which is A or AV on the mode dial. Now, this mode is great because it allows you to select the aperture that you want to use with the camera choosing a shutter speed and ISO that will give you a balanced exposure.
This is a really great mode for beginners and is an easy way to start using Aperture creatively without having to worry about everything else. If you want to find out more about Aperture Priority Mode, consider watching this video next. There's a link coming up at the end. So if we go back to the original title of this week's video, what is the best aperture for photography? Well, now that you know more about aperture, I'm sure you'll agree that the best aperture is simply the one that gives you the best results. And that will of course depend on the type of photography you wish to do. There is no one single answer. A portrait photographer may choose f2.8 or 1.8 to blur backgrounds, whereas a landscape photographer will almost certainly set the aperture to around f11 for a much greater depth of field and maximum sharpness. Aperture is simply a tool to be used, and I hope you've enjoyed the video and you will put some of the tips I've shared to good use and take some amazing photos. If you enjoyed this week's video, please consider giving it a thumbs up because it really does help the videos get noticed. That helps the channel grow. Of course, if you're new here and you want to see more from me, please consider subscribing. And that really is about it other than to say thanks again for watching and I hope to see you again sometime soon. See ya. Bye.